Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Fuchs, let me start with you. Uh, the STB has a long history of working towards consensus on decisions. Can you please explain your views about the importance of consensus-based decision-making and how you will work towards doing so? Thank you for your question, Ranking Member Cruz. As you suggest, the vast majority of the board's decisions have had consensus. Each of my colleagues has valuable insights and the board's work has been strengthened from factoring in competing perspectives and gathering diffuse information. We regulate a complex network industry that has large long-term capital investments. There are benefits from regulatory certainty. Consensus has not only helped the quality of agency action, but also its long-term stability. In terms of my approach, I want to first give credit to the chairman for uh, his efforts uh, to listen and engage with all members, even in instances where we do not agree. For me, it starts with a fundamental respect for my colleagues, their experiences, their knowledge, and their views. I also bring persistence. It's not always easy to come together, but I'm certainly committed to trying. If confirmed, I would continue to value consensus to strengthen the board's decision and provide needed certainty to shippers and carriers alike. Thank you. Uh, Chair Hammondy. Uh, I appreciated your thorough report of the investigation that is ongoing about the accident at the Francis Scott Key Bridge. The video of the dolly right before it collided with the Francis Scott Key Bridge shows that the vessel's lights were turning on and off, suggesting a potential issue either with the engine or the electrical system. I understand you're just beginning your investigation into the incident. H however, is there anything you can tell us about what may have caused the vessel's lights to turn on and off, and do you anticipate that whatever affected the lights may have contributed to the loss of, of vessel control? I do believe they're related, uh, as does our investigators. Our investigators are on scene. Uh, they needed the assistance of Hyundai, who is the manufacturer of equipment in the engine room, to download data from the electrical power system and look at the circuit breakers. That is where our focus is right now in this investigation. Of course, that's preliminary. Uh, it could take different uh, roads, different paths as we continue this investigation. It's very early, uh, but we're collecting that data. A voyage data recorder provides very basic information, not like a flight data recorder. Uh, so there isn't enough information on that to understand. It's really a, a, what was going on in the engine room. It's really a snapshot of the major systems on a vessel. Uh, so that information in the engine room will help us tremendously. Thank you. That's, that, that, that's helpful. Um, also, have all the parties so far been cooperating with the NTSB's investigation? Yes, sir. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, if that changes, would you please let this committee know? Yes, sir. And if I may also add, I want to thank the Federal Bureau of Investigation and uh, the U.S. Coast Guard for their partnership on scene. It was very helpful. Very good. Uh, all right, Chair Hamidi, I want to shift to a different topic. Uh, I'm deeply concerned about many federal agencies post-pandemic telework policies that enable federal employees basically never to come to the office. For example, many of the employees at the Department of Transportation are fully remote. These folks have never come into the office at all. Many others only come in one day or maybe two days per week, spending much more of their paid work time at home rather than in the office. Chair Hamadi, do you believe that having workers come into the office is important for the work of the NTSB? Sir, I believe in in-person work. I believe it is very difficult, especially with a workforce that's uh, one third of our workforce is new. How do you get rooted in the culture of an agency, in the duties that you have to perform? How do you have uh, camaraderie, develop teamwork, get peer-to-peer -peer training, have those conversations, those meaningful conversations face-to-face, -face, the conversations that happen in the hallways, even before meetings or after meetings, if you're sitting at home. So I'm not popular for that position in my agency, but I believe we have to be at work. At home, you cannot do those things. And uh, so uh, I will admit, uh, we are still one of the best small agencies in the federal workforce to work for, but we've taken a hit because of this. But this is my standard. 
we need to be at work. On a Tuesday, and I had our data officer, data program, this is where the successes are, look at the swipes that we get on a Tuesday for our, our, the cards coming in. 73% of our workforce is in on a typical Tuesday. The, the ones who aren't are investigators that frankly are across the United States and should be across the United States investigating different accidents and incidents. But everyone else needs to be in work. We have to be there. Uh, you do not, again, you cannot get rooted in the culture if you're coming to work uh, two times a pay period. And frankly, we've lost employees because we can't compete with that. But I'm sorry, there are many people who love to work at the NTSB and that's why they come in. Well, thank you, Madam Chair, that, that was helpful. And I, I will say to the chairman of the committee that I, I hope this committee examines this issue more closely and I would love to see bipartisan cooperation on this committee. In the Senate, we all come to work, uh, our staffs come to work, in the private sector, virtually every private sector employees, their employees are coming to work. And apparently the, the club fed that we have in terms of federal agencies believes it is perfectly okay for the taxpayers to pay thousands upon thousands of people who never show up at the damn office. And part of the responsibility of this committee is oversight. And, and I would hope we could see some bipartisan agreement that if you're gonna draw a paycheck from the taxpayer, and in many instances, a six-figure paycheck, that you ought to actually show up at work and, and do your job. Well, Senator Cruz, I'm happy to look at this issue. I'm a huge believer that we live in an information age and that the only thing that's gonna hold us back from innovating is collaboration. And it's just a lot harder to collaborate over Zoom, in my opinion. So happy to look at this 